Cash equivalents Cash equivalents are short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to known amount of cash and which are subject to insignificant risk of changes in value. The main parts of this definition are the following. Short-term To be cash equivalent, its maturity must be three months or less. Although this could be changed by a management policy. Next. Highly liquid investment. To be cash equivalent, the item must be near cash and realized in known amount of cash. Examples are Fixed deposit Time deposit Certificate of deposit, or COD Treasury bills Treasury bonds And money market placement Lastly, it must be subject to, insignificant risk, of changes in value. Meaning, if there's a change, in the instrument's market interest rate, that leads to a change in value. The effect of the change must be insignificant. Short term. Cash equivalents must be short term in maturity. Since maturity is involved, accordingly, cash equivalents are debt instruments. Debt instruments are cash equivalents if their original maturity is three months or less. Let's illustrate. An instrument dated January 1, 2020, matures on March 1, 2020. The original maturity is three months. Also, it was acquired on January 1, 2020. Comparing these dates, acquisition and maturity, the instrument was acquired three months from maturity. This is a cash equivalent. Next. An instrument dated January 1, 2020, matures on July 1, 2020. The original maturity is six months, or more than three months. It was acquired on January 1, 2020. Comparing these dates, the instrument was acquired six months from maturity. Now, if the original maturity is more than three months, the instrument is only classified as cash equivalent if it is acquired three months before maturity. The key points are acquired and three months before maturity. Following this rule, this is not a cash equivalent because it was acquired six months before maturity. Instead, this is a short-term investment, since it matures in less than one year. Next, an instrument dated January 1, 2020, matures on July 1, 2020. Six months original maturity, but it was acquired on June 1, 2020. Comparing these dates, the instrument was acquired one month before maturity. From June 1 to July 1, it's cash equivalent. An instrument dated January 1, 2020, matures on January 1, 2021. Or one year original maturity. Comparing these dates, it was acquired two months before maturity. From November 1, 2020 to January 1, 2021. This is a cash equivalent. Point is, acquire two months before maturity. For the next cases, say we have a financial statement date of December 31, 2020, or end of the year. Case 1. Observe that the instrument matures on February 1, 2021. Meaning, as of end of the year, it matures in one month. Is this cash equivalent? Always remember, to be cash equivalent, it must be acquired three months before maturity. Thus, comparing these dates, it is cash equivalent since it is acquired two months from maturity or from December 1, 2020 
to February 1, 2021. Last case. Same as the previous, the instrument matures one month from the end of the year. Again, the dates to compare, are these dates. It was acquired on February 1, 2020, which is actually one year from maturity. This is not a cash equivalent. This is an investment. Since the investment matures one month from the end of the year, then it is classified as short-term investment. Highly liquid. Highly liquid means that the instrument is convertible into known amount of cash. This is the case for debt instruments, where the principal amount and the interest thereon are collectible. On the other hand, equity instruments do not qualify as cash equivalents. They do not represent a fixed amount of cash. Plus, they do not have a maturity date. However, in the case of preference shares, which are equity instruments by nature, if they are mandatorily redeemable, then, they now bear a maturity date, or term of redemption. Plus, they are now payable in fixed amount of cash, as evidenced by the redemption price. In this case, they are now classified, as debt instruments. Meaning, they can now qualify, as cash equivalent. That is, if, they are acquired, three months, from the agreed redemption date. In effect, dividends received from the redeemable preference shares, which are now, debt instruments, are presented as, interest income. Subject to insignificant risk, of changes in value. This is the third feature of a cash equivalent. Let's compare, shares, long-term bonds, and three-month time deposit, for our cash equivalent. Quoted prices of shares, change regularly. Market rate of interest, on long-term bonds, also change. The same is true, for time deposits. However, these changes, cause the fair value, of both shares, and bonds, to fluctuate. Leading to unrealized gains, or losses. For cash equivalent, these changes are insignificant causing almost no change, to the fair value of the instrument. Thus, there are no unrealized gains, or losses. For these reasons, share instruments, are investments. Long-term bonds, are investments. While three-month, time deposits, are cash equivalents. Finally, PA 7, paragraph 7, states that, cash equivalents, are held for the purpose of meeting short-term cash commitments, rather than for investment purposes. Therefore, as one final requirement, cash equivalent, like cash, must be for use, once it matures. Examples To pay dues Salaries And taxes If the entity decides, to hold the time deposits, for sale, trading, or speculation, these are all investment reasons. Thus, the three-month time deposit, or any supposed cash equivalent, is no longer presented, as cash equivalent. It is now presented, as investment. Cash equivalents.